So in this question, we are told that the reaction is first order. And in such a case, we can use the following integrated rate law for first order reactions. Let's continue looking at some of the given information. They tell us that the rate constant, which is symbolized by K, is this value right here. So let's go ahead and write that down. And then as we read on, we can see that we start out with 0.025 moles of N2O5 in a volume of two liters. Now looking at the equation, we do have a term that represents the initial concentration, but that has to be in units of molarity. So what we're going to do is take the number of moles that was given and then divide that by the given volume. So we'll divide that by two liters and we'll calculate the initial concentration and we end up with 0.0125 molar. So that's our initial concentration. We want to figure out how many moles of N2O5 are present after five minutes. Now, looking at the units of the rate constant K, we can see that it is in terms of inverse seconds. So we definitely want to take that time and change it from minutes into seconds. And of course, to do that, we can just multiply by the fact that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So the time, in fact, will be 300 seconds. So just be careful to have consistent units for time. Now, to get the moles after 300 seconds, we're essentially looking for the final concentration. We're gonna figure out that concentration and then change that into moles at the end. Some students find it useful to isolate what they're solving for first. So we're gonna go ahead and do that by pasting this equation and then to solve for that final concentration, what we do is we raise E to both sides of this equation. And effectively, E and the natural log are inverse operations. So they cancel each other out, and this shows us that the final concentration after a certain period of time is going to be equal to E raised to that entire right side of the equation. So now that we have our unknown isolated, this unknown concentration of N2O5, we can go ahead and plug in K, the initial concentration, and the time. And when we simplify that, we can see that the final concentration is approximately 0.00162, and this is going to be in molarity, and that's moles per liter, don't don't forget, so why don't we change molarity to moles per liter? They wanted the moles of this, so we simply multiply by the volume, which was two liters, and after doing that, now we have the moles, and that's going to be approximately 0 0.00323, and that is going to be moles of that N2O5. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's go back up and check out what part B is asking. It wants how many minutes will it take for the quantity of N2O5 to drop to 0 0.01. 1, 0 moles. So we're going to use the same equation, of course, but this time, because they're asking us to calculate a number of minutes, that's a time, we're going to have to rearrange the equation just a little bit. So here's the original equation, and we're going to subtract the natural log of the initial concentration here, and that's going to cancel it out on the right-hand side. And then to solve this equation for time, we will divide both sides by negative k. And that way, the negative k cancels out on the right-hand side. So we have time isolated, we can begin to plug in. Now, what we're doing is we're given the final number of moles in part B, but the equation has concentration. So of course, we're going to have to take that final number of moles, which was 0 0.01, and then divide that by two liters because that's going to give us a concentration in terms of molarity. And then we subtract the natural log. And then same thing here, the initial number of moles was 0 0.025, but we need concentration, so just make sure you divide that by two liters, and then you're going to divide that all by negative K, and K was given in the question. And when you punch that into your calculator very carefully, you should get a time of approximately 134.35. Looking at the unit of the rate constant K, this is turning out in seconds, but the question wanted the time in minutes, so to change seconds to minutes, we just divide by the fact that there's 60 seconds per minute, and when we do that, we're going to get about 2.2 .2 minutes. And this is the correct answer to part B of the question. So now we go back up to part C and see what we're looking for there. And finally, it says, what is the half-life of this compound? Now, there is an equation for half-life of a first-order reaction. We probably have seen that as T1 half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the rate constant K. And this is true for a first order reaction where the half-life is a constant value. So we can readily plug in the rate constant K and get our answer. 
So we plug that in and we get approximately 101.6. Once again, this comes out in seconds. If you need to get that into minutes, just divide by 60 seconds per minute and your time will equal approximately 1.69 minutes. So this is the correct answer to part C of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please don't feel obligated to do so.